Hello again. Uh, here's another episode of Let's Talk Special Economic Zones. I'm your host, Ainsley Brown. Today's episode, we're going to speak about how do you measure the performance of a SEZ, or more importantly, how do you measure the performance of an SEZ regime? So firstly, you have to go back a couple steps and determine what was the purpose of this special economic zone? What was the policy driving it? Uh, what what did the government say it wants in equivalent or, or in exchange? Because the government is putting up a variety of things, and it depends. And across the world, uh, regimes differ. Now, they, there can be fiscal incentives. There can be even financial incentives. There can even be um, land um, being put up for people to come in and construct. Or the zone could be fully constructed and... The government is either looking for tenants or they could even be looking for someone to divest the zone to that they run the zone and attract tenants themselves. So how do, do you measure, especially from a government perspective, the performance? Of course, central to almost every zone is job creation and development and all of these different um, things that governments seek to do and, and bring benefits to their people. But one of the things that especially you know in 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 the time that we're living uh you have to look at is is it sustainable um you have to look and do some cost benefit analysis but the costs are not just financial or not just fiscal um they have to, you have to factor in the environmental costs um and also environmental benefits because it, it, it there's two sides to that equation you also look at the social cost and the social benefits yes uh, you can say um, you are creating new jobs, but at what cost? At what price? Um, also, um, so overall, you have to do that cost-benefit analysis over time. It, it, it can't be a situation where, um, you know, in one month or a year, you say, well, you know, this is what we're supposed to get back. Uh, you have to look at it over time and set those targets, right? Importantly, set the targets. Uh, this is what we want in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years and, and, and onwards in terms of when a government is designing and even after it designs to monitor um, the performance of zones and, and also evaluating uh, the people that are um, let into the regime. Because if you start to do it that way or you do it um, up front, um, one, it's transparent and everyone knows what they need to do to get into the regime. And two, um, you know up front, you can start to do some projections. So you can do projections, but then you, you, you've already done your cost benefit analysis on um, say a developer who's coming to, to build out a project. You know that, okay, they're gonna focus on say um, pharmaceuticals, right? Or they're gonna focus on automotive or they're gonna focus on logistics you know, distribution and so forth, whatever it is that they're focusing on to, um, you know, theme their zone, you and and the number of tenants, um, you know, their, their footprint, what's going to be their energy footprint, what's going to be their water footprint, what's going to be their effluent footprint, what's going to be their um, greenhouse emission footprint. You can do some projection so you can look at that cost benefit. And at the end of the day, is it worth it? Okay, you got two, three thousand jobs, but you can't breathe. Was it worth it? Is it worth it? You can do that that level of analysis, um, and um, you look at what you're giving up. Now, the easier side of things is the fiscal. You know that the government is going to give up, you know, this amount of um, fiscal uh, benefits in, in the form of uh, incentives, um, but there are ways to measure the other costs, the environmental costs, the the, the um, social costs as well, and I've, and 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 importantly, even in, in in the time we're living in governance, because you have to look at it from the perspective of, um, you know, the the investors that you're bringing in are they following um, global governance rules? Because uh, by letting them in, you could find yourself in a situation where you get blacklisted not because of your actions directly, but because of the actions of an investor. Um, you know, are they, are they paying their taxes um, on time? Um, 
are they are they uh, blacklisted in some other um, on some other list? Uh, you know, the World Bank has a certain lists in terms of um, you know who they procure from and and do projects with and so forth. Um, money laundering is a big thing, um, whether whether it's actual you know direct money or through trade. Um, these sorts of things um, can um, cause negative effects, but then also there are positive effects um, that can be um, gained from that with, with people actually abiding by rules and so forth and putting that forward. Um, and it becomes a virtuous circle or a cycle where, you know, um, you attract that type of investor who then attracts more investors and, and, and such and so forth. So zones can play that, that positive role. Um, in, um, in, in overall development and you have to measure it in that way, not just, um, and also you have to look at the spillover effects. Are you getting those spillover effects? Are you getting that technology transfer, that management um, techniques and, and different things, um, education transfer? Are new businesses being spawned that support the zones either directly or indirectly? These are factors that you have to look at over time to say, yes, this was worth it. So if you like this episode, please um, like, share, uh, leave a comment down below, um, and I'll get um, right back to you. If you want to suggest also a, a future episode, just let me know.